no doubt had a dampening effect on economic activities across the globe, especially for countries which depend heavily on crude oil revenue, which has been affected by the fall in oil price at the international market. Here in Nigeria, experts and operators in the mining sector have said that its huge potential means much more will accrue if the country properly harnesses its fast, solid mineral resources. The mining and quarrying sector grew by 6.07% in the fourth quarter of 2019, while the average global price of crushed limestone is approximately $32.50 per tonne. A research analyst at the financial derivatives company, Dumebi Ieke, joins us now to talk more about the price movement in limestone in Nigeria and its impact on the cement market. Good afternoon, Dumebi. Thanks for coming on the program. Now, in spite of the slowdown in global economic activities, is there any chance that the retail price of cement in Nigeria will reflect the market dynamics of limestone? Well, BC, um, we expect that um, the price movement in limestone would actually reflect in the price in the prices of cement, um, and this is because um, cement is one of the refined products from limestone. And if there are any price changes in um, the market for cement, it would actually reflect in the prices of cement, as there's a direct relationship between um, both um, commodities. R limestone is the raw material, and cement is one of the uh, many refined products that. Come from limestone. Um, Nigeria is one. Nigeria produces um, a large quantity of limestone. Um, currently, lime, limestone deposits are about. Um, 2.3 trillion metric tons um, with over 500 million tons of um, reserves in, of, of reserves in limestone. So um, what we've seen is that um, companies that actually produce cement in Nigeria um, demand um, for limestone domestically. So um, their price, if there's any change, um, if there's any movement in the price of limestone domestically, um, the price they would see um, a reflection of that price movement in um, the prices of cement. But it's projected that GDP growth will fall to minus 5% in 2020. Do you think that the current contraction in economic activity will lead to a decline in the price of cement, a product that is derived from limestone? Um, yes, we see um, the um, contraction in the economy was going to be about um, 7 percent as, you know, um, Q4 2019 GDP, um, you know, showed that Nigeria grew um, to about 2.55 percent. And right now we're seeing that um, the economy could contract, you know, by um, 5 percent. And this is because of, you know, the um, current health crisis um, that both the both the entire world and Nigeria is experiencing um, right now. So what we're going to see is with recession, you know, recession is um, primarily or is usually accompanied by um, lower le um, lower levels of income because of um, employment, um, because of unemployment, as companies would um, lay off staffs and lay off staff members rather, and companies, you know, would. Um, and the production of um, production and economic activities will significantly decline. And from an individual, um, from an individual's point of view, if um, if there's a 50% decline in the real purchasing power of an individual, you know the individual would want to focus more on you know essential commodities than you know focus on probably a building project that involves cement. And from the government's point of view, there would be. Um, a reduction in capital projects as the company as the country would want to um, spend more on um, activities or would divert their resources to you know um, curbing the spread of of the pandemic so we're going to see a significant decline in in demand and when this happens um, price of cement would actually um, decline Sokoto and Benue states have vast deposits of limestone and these states have been affected by covid-19 earthsmen and other crises how will this affect the overall production of this commodity in the country? And will this in any way have an effect on the price of the commodity? Um, yes, we see there would be... Um um, it would, it'll be a very, very. Um, there could be a very, very sharp decline in um, the production of the commodity, and this is because not only um, is not only um, Sokoto states and um, um, Sokoto and Borno states um, are, are experiencing um, this um, crisis. Um, 
um, other states that produce this commodity uh, are also experiencing the health crisis. And with all of this um, put together, um, most of these states would actually, you know, focus more or and and you know um, fo focus their attention more on curbing the health crisis within their state. And this could all this could lead to a decline in the production of this. Um, Commodity. Most of these states will produce it with um, practicing social distancing, and you know companies would still be shut down. Um, and mining and quarrying activities um, regarding limestone could decline um, significantly. So we could see um, the overall production of um, limestone decline significantly in the coming term. Maybe Yeke, research analyst at the FDC. Thanks for speaking with us. Thank you so much, BC. The latest reports by the United Nations Food Agency shows world food prices fell for a third consecutive month in April, hit by the economic and logistical impacts of the coronavirus pandemic. The Food and Agriculture Organization Food Price Index, which measures monthly changes for a basket of cereals, oil seeds, dairy products, as well as meat and sugar, averaged 165.5 points last month, down 3.4 percent in March. The Rome-based agency's test of FAO sugar price index fell to a 13-year low, plunging 14.6% from March, with the coronavirus crisis hit in demand and tumbling crude oil prices also reducing the need for sugarcane to produce ethanol. The vegetable oil price index fell 5.2%, while the dairy index dropped 3.6%, with butter and milk powder prices posting double-digit declines. Rice prices rose 7.2% from March, and that was due in large part to temporary export restrictions by Vietnam that were subsequently repealed. South African business confidence dropped to its lowest level since 1985 in April as the coronavirus pandemic hit export volumes as well as local demand. The South African Chamber of Commerce and Industry's monthly business confidence index fell to 77.8, its lowest since the inception of the survey 35 years ago, from 89.9 in March. The SACCI says in a statement that striking negative monthly impacts on the BCI were caused by the lower volume of merchandise exports, the weaker exchange rate of the rand, and less new vehicles sold, all mainly due to the lockdown. The International Monetary Fund has approved an emergency loan worth $491.5 million for Uganda to help cushion its economy from the impacts of the coronavirus. Key sectors of the East African economy, such as tourism, have taken a heavy blow from the crisis, and the effect has been compounded by lockdown of the entire population to curb the spread of the virus. Meanwhile, the IMF has also approved $739 million in emergency financing to help Kenya respond to the economic shock caused by the novel coronavirus pandemic. And that's where we end today's programs. Thank you for watching. I am BC Adebayo.